Hi guys, Goffy here, hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Fuji X100V yet again, but this video is actually relevant for pretty much all of Fuji cameras. If you are, however, here for the film photography, do not fear, I'm sat here with my Leica M6 right next to me and a roll of HP5, and I'm in a bit of a different place, so we're gonna be shooting a film video just after this one. But today's video is all about Fuji and shooting film. So how have I managed that then? The Fuji X100V is a digital camera and it's using something called Fuji Recipes. I did mention this in my previous video, so if you know how to actually do the setup in terms of setting up Fuji Recipes, I'm gonna put some timestamps on the screen now so you can hop around this video as you need and see fit. So first up, what on earth is a Fuji Recipe? If you're a Fuji owner, you'll probably know that your camera has some of the best JPEG customizations settings of any brand out there and there's some clever people out there so what they've done is they've built some settings that you can copy off of various websites and plug into your Fuji to emulate different film stocks. The best place I found to do this is a website called Fuji Weekly. On Fuji Weekly you can pick your camera sensor and then various different film stocks. When you click on one of them film stocks it will take you to another page where you have a bunch of camera settings that you can key into your camera. To key these into your camera on the X100V, you have to go to the third page of image quality, then head to edit, save, custom setting, then select a setting that you'd like to overwrite. So there'll be a few here, I think there's up to seven. Click on edit and then copy the settings that you can see on a website. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Kodachrome 64, the Ecta, the Portrait, and for black and white, we're gonna be having a little bit of a look at the Triax. Beyond using these emulations, I do have one more little trick up my sleeve and it is my secret weapon for making my digital files look a little bit like film. And that is the filter on the front of my camera. So I am using the black Promist filter. There's a few different variations out there from different companies. They've all got their own company brand. I think Moment are called Cine Bloom filters and I personally am using the one quarter filter. What this does is it adds a bit of haze and a bit of a glow to the highlights in your image. You'll see it in a couple of these images here where you'll see the highlights have got this nice glow to them and it's a bit of a soft look so it helps sell that film look out of a digital file. You don't need this filter by any means and I think on YouTube these filters are a little bit at the minute somewhat overhyped but they do definitely add to that sort of film and vintage look. So enough of me talking, let's see some photos. So Claire and I headed out to a place called Paynes Hill. It's just inside the M25 near Cobham. We ended up finding out about this place because it's featured quite a lot on Netflix. So some of the Netflix series recently have been filmed there. Bridgerton is a good example of this. There's a couple of the Black Mirror episodes as well are also filmed here. It's what's called a landscape park. It's basically some rich guy back in the 18th century with far too much money, owned a massive great big park. And what he did with it was he made different sort of random buildings in different areas that looked cool. Some really famous people have been there as well, including some American presidents. As it's pretty central to London, also pretty close to Windsor, so people that visited the Queen have also then gone to this park for a bit of a walkabout. During the trip, I was cycling pretty freely between the different presets that I'd set up. I was doing this by pressing the Q button and then flicking through the scroll wheel, changing my preset up here at the top. I find when using these presets, when you press the shutter just afterwards, it takes a little bit of a while sometimes to actually process the image, maybe a second or two. But then again, I guess this beats booting up Lightroom. So even if it takes a little second, who cares too much because this is saving. I could be a little bit of editing at the end. Due to the way these presets have been made, a lot of the time they are crushing the highlights and crushing the shadows, and they're doing this quite a lot. So I found that I was running my X100V on plus one on my exposure compensation dial on the top of the camera more often than not. Sometimes I was going even further than this to get that sort of look that I like. Of the color presets, I found myself not really using the Kodak Portra one. I found the Portra one just a little bit too green for my liking, so I'll probably end up tweaking that back a little bit. But I did find myself really, really enjoying both the Kodachrome 64 and the Ektar. In 
Interestingly though, a little bit like film really, I found these both looked better in bright sunlight and when the clouds started to come in, the look started to look a little bit weird. And that's probably where the white balance has been set. The white balance would have been set for these films. These are two daylight films, so when things get a bit dark and overcast, the film will look a bit weird, a little bit like it would if you were shooting the real thing. For me, there is something about how these Fuji cameras render black and white images. The black and white images I honestly think look so, so good. I don't know how close this is to Tri-X, I haven't shot that much. Regardless of whether it does look like Tri-X or not, I absolutely love the black and white images. They come out really contrasty and these Fuji cameras just know what they're doing when it comes to black and white. weeks ago I posted an image on Instagram and it was this image and on the image I asked people whether they thought it was a film image or a digital image and most people know I'm a film photographer so maybe that swayed the decision a little bit but it was very 50 50 people weren't sure whether it was film or digital and I think that says a lot about this filter and these presets they do trick quite a lot of people and it's great that you're able to do this in camera. This is something that previously, if you wanted to get that film look on your digital files, you'd have to import them into Lightroom and have a good mess around with them there. But instead, straight out of camera JPEGs are genuinely confusing people. By no means gonna get me rushing out and selling all my film stuff and going fully over to digital because I absolutely love the process of shooting film, especially some of the rangefinder cameras like the Leicas. Already, you might want to check out a video I did recently where I took a roll of Fuji across a real roll of film and I compared that to the across setting inside of the X100V. You can see the images next to each other and as good as that preset is there are pretty pretty distinct differences between the two files. The film files are quite creamy and have kind of a sort of nice soft look to them whereas the digital files are very sharp and have a bit more of a refined sort of look to them. If you're into Fuji cameras or film photography then please please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I hope to have you along for the ride as there's plenty more content like this coming. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.